Welcome back. Here's our sorted dictionary that depends on a dict. We're supposed to replace the keys method with our sorted keys. So I'm going up to the dicts keys, which gives me a list of the keys in random order or in hash table order. And I'll just sort them and return them. Here I did it using a super in case anybody likes to see that super. But then again, I need to do a magic iter. The magic iter then, I will list my self key. Since the keys come alphabetical because it's my keys, then I will be yielding them alphabetically in my magic iter. In order to test this, you might need more than a few key value pairs in your testing dictionary so that you can see that the sorted dict is different from the regular dict. I'm going to initialize it with various dictionaries. Here's one. Here's one of the dictionaries I'm testing with. I always like to test with the empty. A lot of bugs lurk there. And here, instead of Testing with a dictionary, I have a tuple of tuples. That should work because it works with a regular dictionary. And in fact, the question I gave you, where you, you were to be sure that it works with every input that would make a dict work, is kind of a red herring question because if I don't make a magic init, then the magic init happens in the dict. And so anything that the dict's magic init can do, so can mine. So, for each of these initializers, I'll make a regular dict and a sorted dict, and I'm going to report a list of the regular dict's keys and a list of the sorted dict keys. Then I'm going to do a for loop on the sorted dict to make sure that works nicely, that they come out sorted. In my regular dict keys, when I had these false, zero, true, none, it did come out different from how it came out with the sorted dict. Sorted is sorted, so that's good. And the for loop, and that's good. Empty, nothing for that, and that's good. And then here are the other keys. And then here's the, the regular dict's keys with all these Christmas things. And when they're sorted, they in fact do come out sorted, and also the for loop is sorted. So we did that. Our last task is to make a game dealer class. The game dealer class instantiates with the number of players and the number of cards. And then we should be able to deal hands. Let's take a look. Here is our game dealer initializer. It has defaulted four players and five cards. And then we're going to store these things. And here I am making a list of players. For that many players, I turned it into an int in case somebody gave me a string. And I'm going to instantiate a deck. So we have these two classes to look at, player and deck. Let's go look at player. When the player is initialized, he has an empty list for his hand. He can accept a card, and then we add in a new card. And for his magic string, he does the comma space join of his hand. Now our deck, we're going to keep a private list of cards. And we're going to call our old cards def get cards. It's up here in lab 140 in comprehensions. And remember that get cards gives us a list of cards in the whole deck, each one being a string. So a list of strings, each one being a card. And then I'll call random shuffle of these cards, and now they're shuffled. Now this is interesting. If I want to iterate my deck, I'm going to return the deck. Because I put in the deck a magic next, and therefore I can just pop the cards out. So when I iterate them, they go away. I'm just going to pop them out. When I have nothing left to pop, that's when we raise the stop iteration. So that's a little interesting. Okay, next we're going to deal our hands. Let's look at that. Deal hands. We're going to go around however many cards we have 
for each hand. And then we go around all the players, because that's what you do when you deal cards. One for you, one for you, one for you, one for you. Two, 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 two. So we're doing that too. We're going through the players here. And we're giving a new card to our player by calling next, if we can. Otherwise, the new card is just, sorry. And we're going to say player, accept card. And we saw that that just adds to his hand. So that's great. Deal hands then, deals the card, and takes it out of the deck, just as reality insists. My magic string then, I'm going to do a string of each of my players. And I'm going to new line join them. Good to remember that our magic string for our player is just the comma join of the cards in his hand. Coming down here, when we do a player of four and five, which is very usual, here we see the four players and their five cards. Here we're doing 20 and three, so that's 60 cards. So we're going to get some sorries. So we're, I deleted a lot of the hands, and then we see that we have sorries in the end of everybody. You don't get a card. Okay, that's it for this lab. If you are a well-seasoned, object-oriented programmer, you're wondering maybe about encapsulation. Well, we'll study that in the next lab. I'll see you when you're ready.